Welcome to Spoiler Alert, where we talk about and spoil the shows we're obsessed with. This week, we're talking about the controversy surrounding Mad Men's Joan. We're on the scene at True Blood's season five premiere party in Hollywood, and Tim Daly got fired from private practice. But how will he leave? Welcome, Mr. Midovich. Welcome. So, Mad Men. Yes. Joan prostituted herself. That's a nasty word. But it is what happened. It's a loaded word. Let me see him. I loved the episode. Honestly, when I was watching it, I didn't think that there was going to be any backlash. Really? I was happy that there was finally uh, a Mad Men episode this season that was about something. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on. But as you were watching it, first of all, did your heart break when she made the decision? When she went on the date with Herb? It was heartbreaking. Yes, without question. I couldn't even believe it got to that point, though. I mean, they started off with a scene where Pete was out to dinner with the guy. And I just never imagined that that conversation would make it away from that dinner table. I was reading some stuff online, trying to figure out what was going on inside Joan's head when she made this decision. And she just got served with divorce papers. You know, Mm -hmm. she's got a child now. She's going to be a single mother thinking of the big picture. She's going to be a partner in this firm now. That's the best defense for what she decided to do. Right. I think people are struggling with, are we mad at Joan? Or are we mad at the partners who voted or didn't vote on whether she should do this? Uh, We ran a poll on the website at TV Line, and uh, thus far, Roger is taking most of the heat. I'm not going to stand in the way, but I'm not paying for it. I think people really felt that Roger was the one who should have stepped forward, put his foot down, or at the very least, speak to Joan himself instead of taking Pete's word for it. But Mm -hmm. Pete himself is also taking a lot of flack. You have some nerve to even ask her. That's right. Well, and I think there's going to be a lot of fallout from this. That's right. Clearly, Don is not savoring the success Mm -hmm. that was, you know, brought about as a result of this whole thing. Right, because his campaign was so gangbusters, he probably could have gotten it clean. Right. But the other fun part of the episode, I thought, was with the whole Peggy leaving thing. If only because there was that final scene when she's like, just like on top of the world. They got the happy yeah. music playing for her. She stood her ground. You know, there's no number that can keep me down. She's walking to the elevator. The same elevator that was an empty shaft a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. You had to think I that, didn't, that they were going to just pull the rug out from under her almost you literally. Imagine? That would have been a little too comical. Yeah, that would have been a jump to But it's interesting. going to be interesting to see how they're going to continue to keep Peggy and, you know, integral to the show now that she's at another firm. I, I, obviously, you'd think they're going to set up Don versus Peggy. I don't know yeah. if it, how quickly that could happen, though. Because we only have two episodes left. Only two episodes. Well, I hope um, the any potential absence of Peggy means more um, Megan. Because God knows what a fully rounded, phenomenal We're not character. getting into this again. Are you going to make yourself cry? Anyway, okay, Megan Masters, our colleague, was at the Speaking True Blood. Speaking of Megan. Pre- yeah, another that was Megan. an awesome segue. And Megan, I much prefer, was at the True Blood premiere just a couple days ago and got a lot of good scoops. So let's let's see how she did. Thanks, Mike and Matt. So I'm here to tell you exclusively that waiting for the True Blood stars on the red carpet officially sucks. But wait, they're here. It's the season of uh, church and state. Okay. It's the season of politics and religion from the vampire perspective. Alexander is a feisty and really strong-minded vampire, and um, every show I did, he grew more obnoxious and scary, and I had to really figure out if I wanted to do this, or did I want to be sly and smooth, so I ended up picking both. Vampire politics are really the focus of the season this year, which I think is fantastic, and has a lot to do with Eric's and Bill's and Russell's relationships. I've been caught away on business for a while. It's been amazing. We're great friends, and it's been a lot of fun, and um, we... We kind of love each other. How about wrapping it up? I could use a hand here. I really like Eric's relationship with his vampire sister, Nora. They love each other very much, but they've not seen each other for a long time. And they have a very uh, fraternal relationship in that they're quite aggressive to each other sometimes. They love each other other times. They make a good team when they work together, but otherwise they just really mess each other up. Eric's sister is also coming in. I have yes. to imagine that's a bit of a turmoil for yeah, Pam. Yeah, that's interesting for Pam. I mean, yeah, she's like my aunt, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I guess. I play Ricky. She was uh, described as a dirty, beautiful werewolf. Not sure, really. <laughs> she's very resourceful, the, uh, the polar opposite of a damsel in distress, and she's fiercely loyal and determined to find out what happened to the Packmaster. She is not loving Alcide at this moment. Um, no. Now, one person that we're all so excited to learn more about is Scott Foley's character. What can you say about what happened in Iraq? What is the deal with him and Terry? Patrick is the character's name. He made a very bad decision in the heat of battle, and it has far reaching consequences. Fires aren't something to be taken lightly is all. Thank you. 
And that is coming from a U.S. Marine. Promos have been coming out and everyone's in them, but Tara, people are freaking out, even though you have been pretty <laughs> honest about that you are coming back to the show, right? I, I love that. I love that people are still like, but I don't know. <laughs> She's not there. Where is she? I'm sure people have ideas how that, how that can happen, and one of those is right. Steve coming back as a vampire is, it might be the best thing that ever happened to Steve, frankly. I think it's probably the best thing that ever happened to me. The big question I had was whether or not, since he was such a vampire hater, if he was going to be this self-loathing, yeah. self-hating vampire. But the thing about Steve is that he's very attracted to power. There's a tradition, a historical tradition, that when anybody is brought back to life, they have to lose something. And I think for Russell, he's lost that sense of vicious ambition. But what's come instead is a sense of playfulness, and a sense of ease and humor. Uh, make no mistake, he's still really dangerous, yeah. and he still kills a lot of people, but he kills them with glee. Russell's gonna come after you, which is why you gotta come stay with me. I can't. I think Jason was the guy that Steve always kinda wanted to be. Yes. He's coming after Jason, and Jason, as you said, has, uh, has sort of a new vampire friend in Jessica. So if you mess with Jason, you mess with Jessica. We saw a new promo where he's sort of decomposed-ish looking at first. How long does it take for you to get back into your good form? Four or five episodes. Takes a while. I mean, you know, he was depleted, burned, chained, and buried. Yeah. That's heavy duty. Anna Camp, she out of the picture? I wouldn't count anybody out. I wouldn't count anybody out. Like I said, if you haven't been killed off, uh, there's a good chance you're gonna see somebody again. There's a couple of couples, but if I were to bring them up, I'd be giving stuff away, so I can't. So I can't new pairs later yes. in the season. Yes. Are we seeing a love interest for him this season as well? Ooh. He falls in love. It comes unexpectedly. It comes when he least expected it. He looked across a room and he saw somebody who he never had thought of falling in love with, and something happened. And then later, while sharing a body. Something else happened. Someone we know? Someone you know. Someone we'll be surprised by? Very surprised by. And lastly, you always have amazing lines. Any stand out this time around? I get to call somebody a morally bankrupt, hypocritical, V-swigging, blank addicted, whoremonger of the worst kind. All in one breath. Dennis O'Hare, hilarious. Yeah. Very good to have the king back. I've seen the first four episodes. Uh, a very strong start to season five. I can tell you that uh, Pam owns these first four episodes. I've heard that, yeah. Some really wonderful stuff, some good origin stuff between Pam and Eric. One thing that was really fun was filming her backstory. Alex and I have been asking the producers, what's the story for years, for four years, and finally we know the story. It, to me, felt like it really explained the Pam we know. But really, some of the funniest one-liners that she's ever had. There's one involving Walmart, that I think is gonna have everyone howling. Do you think that season five has a little bit of something to prove? Is there a burden on this to really be extra solid? Well, I know some people were grumbling about season four. They didn't feel like sort of the witch storyline lived up to the hype. But I also think it's Alan Ball's final season as showrunner, so maybe he has a little bit of something to prove. Are you approaching how you write the end of the season any differently, or is it just... The final episode of the season has several cliffhangery moments. Okay. Um, and I know that the writers that, uh, you know, that I've been working with over the past few years are going to continue to do the same amazing job that they've done for the last five years. Uh, so I didn't really approach it any differently, no. And before we go, big news on private practice, Tim Daly not returning, which is going to be interesting. How are they going to write him out? Right, and we had just done a, a slideshow the other day about yeah, right. characters that could be Do you think Shonda was flipping through there and saying, <laughs> hmm? That, Good idea. That answers my decision on how to uh, cut some overhead. Not a surprise that someone had to be let go. I know right. negotiations for the final season came down to the wire over costs. Mm -hmm. That's an expensive cast. Any of those people could be headlining their own show. And we were guest meeting. It was either going to be Tim or Tay Diggs. Right. The way it left off at the end of the season, you know, Pete had been arrested, but he was already out on bail. Right. So how does he just disappear now? What is your theory? Well, I think there's got to be a time jump. Yeah. Either he went into the clink and he's just declared himself persona non grata. He won't speak to Violet or anybody and that accounts for his absence. What's interesting though, how does a time jump affect the Addison storyline? You know, because when we last saw her, she mm -hmm. had a little bit of a romantic dilemma. Maybe we come back from the time jump and, you know, she will have snubbed Sam and now she's, you know, in deep with uh, the right. Benjamin Bratt character. Thanks, Matt, for joining us. Always a pleasure. Now we're going to stare at each other while the credits roll. Do you think people ever look at the ropes behind the window and think that they're nooses?
I will tell you this. I did something this season that I felt was borderline pornography.